Good evening, everyone. Sego ani buju endio wachea kwekwe. As the mayor of the city of Kingston, I offer these words in the spirit of this gathering. Let us bring our good minds and hearts together as one to honor and celebrate these traditional lands as the gathering place of the original peoples and their ancestors who were entrusted to care for Mother Earth since time immemorial. It is with deep humility that we acknowledge and offer our gratitude for their contributions to this community, having respect for all as we share this space now and walk side by side into the future. So with that, we were uh, meeting in committee, the whole closed meeting. Uh, before this, we discussed uh, several items uh, with respect to uh, the Ontario Nurses Association mandate, uh, collective bargaining with the Canadian Union of Public Employees, and a proposed property acquisition for municipal facility. So with that, I will ask for a motion to waive our procedural rules and have the clerk report. Uh, moved by Councillor Osterhoff, seconded by Councillor Tozo, that Council rise from the Committee of the Whole closed meeting that the rules of bylaw number 2021-41 be waived in the City Clerk report. All those in favour? Opposed? And that's carried. Moved by Councillor Osterhoff, seconded by Councillor Tozo, that Council approve the purchase of 2685 Creekford Road, Kingston, and direct the Director of Business, Real Estate, and Environment to execute any documents requisite to the waiver fulfillment of conditions contained in the agreement of purchase and sale between Kingston Creekford Holdings, Inc. and the Corporation of the City of Kingston for the purchase of the subject property for $1,450,000 in a form satisfactory to the Director of Legal Services, and waive the requirement to obtain two independent appraisals from certified appraisers when the property value is over $1 million in accordance with the City's acquisition of real property policy, and that up to $1,480,000 be funded from the Municipal Capital Reserve Fund for purchase of the subject property and related closing costs, and that the Mayor and City Clerk be authorized to execute the necessary legal documents to affect the purchase of the subject property. All those in favour? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, moving on to the approval of the edits, we have a motion of recognition, a motion of condolence, and some communications. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the edits? Moved by Councillor Tozo, seconded by Councillor Ridge. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Are there any disclosures of potential pecuniary interest? Councillor Bone. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, these are from a uh, prior meeting that I was not in attendance at. So I, Ryan Bowman, the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of Report 23-2019. As an employee of Utilities Kingston, it may be perceived that I have potential conflict of interest in the matter of Report 23-2219, closed meeting agenda item 4, for insofar as it relates to Utilities Kingston. And I, Ryan Bowman, with the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of Clause 1, Report Number 78, from council meeting 24-2023. Due to a pending acquisition for my wife's business, I must declare the current potential of a potential pecuniary interest with respect to clause one report 78. And those have been duly submitted. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, council Ostroff. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Um, I, Gary Ostroff, the council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of new motion number one, as I have a professional relationship with the developer. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. If there are no other uh, declarations of pecuniary interest, we will move on. We have no presentations this evening. We have no delegations. We have no briefings. Are there any petitions to present? Okay, so we will move on to, again, we have a motion of recognition and a motion of condolence. Uh, first, moved by Councillor Tozo, seconded by Councillor Ridge, that the Kingston City Council recognize October 6, 2023 as World Cerebral Palsy Day, a global movement that started in 2012. World Cerebral Palsy Day aims to bring together people living with cerebral palsy, their families, supporters, and organizations in over 100 countries. Cerebral palsy is a physical disability that affects movement and posture, often including related vision, hearing, communication, and mobility needs. According to Statistics Canada, the number of people living with cerebral palsy in Canada is expected to rise from more than 75,000 in 2011 to more than 94,000 in 2031. The City of Kingston shows its support to the families living with cerebral palsy and the organizations that support them. And now a motion of condolence. Moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stephen, that the sincere condolences of Kingston City Council be extended to Councillor Bohm, his siblings Amanda and Tyson, and their families for the passing of Anita Jean Pennell on September 27th after a courageous 18-month battle with cancer. A loving mother, adoring grandmother, and steadfast sister, 
Anita will be greatly missed by family, friends, and colleagues. Retired from the Regional Assessment and Resource Center at Queen's University, Anita loved to research her family genealogy, read metaphysical books, and garden. In her passing, Anita conveys great gratitude and love to her support team for taking her to her appointments or being there when she needed loving people the most. We extend our deepest sympathies to Anita's entire family and all who knew her. We will call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, we have no deferred motions. And so we will move on to reports. First up, we have report number 80 from the Kingston Heritage Properties Committee. Moved by Councillor Glenn, seconded by Councillor Osterhoff, that report 80 from the Kingston Heritage Properties Committee be received and adopted. Okay, there's just the one clause. Notice of intention to designate under the Ontario Heritage Act as amended by the Kingston Heritage Properties Committee on September 20th, 2023. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, we have nothing from Committee of the Whole. Information reports, we have one information report. If you have any questions, just raise your hand. Top five staff recommended provincial housing affordability task force recommendations. Councillor Shaves. Thank you. Um, just for clarification, um, on page 57 of the report, paragraph five, which it uh, designates the first option, I'm just inquiring if there's this is being done anywhere else in Ontario. Uh, Commissioner Agnew. Uh, thank you, through you. Sorry, can you clarify exactly what part? It was on page 57, first paragraph. It, it was actually the, the first uh, option. Can you just describe, just for all of us, what, what option one is? Conditional zoning. Yep. Parents, conditional zoning. Uh, thank you, and through you. So we're aware of um, some other municipalities uh, like the City of Toronto and the City of, I believe, Mississauga that have applied a, a similar type approach, but um, typically speaking, conditional zoning hasn't um, formally been enabled yet by the province, although it's been in the planning legislation for many years because they haven't yet enacted the, le the legislation through a regulation. So that's been part of staff recommendations to the province for probably about 18 months now as one of the key pieces that the province has to unlock so that municipalities can use. So that's why we're advocating for it so strongly. Okay, uh, follow up. Would there be any changes to the current procedures? Uh, thinking through you, I think, you know, we would have to look at what would make sense and make sure that council was comfortable with the approach because it would be something that, um, in the spirit of trying to expedite the process, it may look different from the process that's followed now. So certain things in terms of when information would come would be available later in a site plan process versus a zoning process, which is the whole point of deferring it until the detailed design stage. So I think it's a conversation that we would have to work with council to make sure that you're comfortable with the, the approach that we would take with respect to using the new legislation if the province writes the regulation to allow us to do so, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on, we have no information reports from members of council. Miscellaneous business. We have a number of motions. First, moved by Councillor Stevens, seconded by Councillor Shnani. That is requested by Sylvia Harnarian, uh, Canadian Premature Babies Foundation. City Council proclaimed November 17th, 2023 to be World Prematurity Day in the City of Kingston. Number two, moved by Councillor Ridge, seconded by Councillor Glenn, that the resignation of Peter O'Hare from the Committee of Adjustment be received with regret, and that in accordance with Section 3.3.2D of the Public Appointment Policy, Douglas Perkins be appointed from the Reserve Pool to the Committee of Adjustment for a term ending November 15, 2026. Number three, moved by Councillor Osanek, seconded by Councillor Shays, that the resignation of Anise Carriage from the Committee of Adjustment be received with regret. And then in accordance with section 3.3.2D of the public appointment policy, Jeff Scott be appointed from the reserve pool to the committee of adjustment for a term ending November 15th, 2026. Number four, moved by Councillor Chenani, seconded by Councillor Tozo, that the resignation of David Morton from the committee of adjustment be received with regret. And then in accordance with section 3.3.2D of the public appointment policy, Gaurav Rehan be appointed from the reserve pool to the committee of adjustment for a term ending November 15th, 2026. 
Number five, moved by Councillor Osterhoff, seconded by Councillor Hassan, that is requested by Maya Sharma, Canadian Lung Cancer Screening Initiative, City Council proclaimed November 2023 to be Lung Cancer Awareness Month in the City of Kingston. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, moving on to new motions. We have two new motions this evening. Number one, moved by Councillor Glenn, seconded by Councillor Ridge. Whereas Fotan Consultants, Inc., on behalf of Amber Peak Developments, has submitted an application for minor variance and site plan control for the properties municipally known as 390 and 386 Johnson Street and 40 Aberdeen Street to construct a six-story, 45-unit building. Whereas bylaw number 2006-75 allows for a member of council to make a notice of motion through council that an application for site plan control approval be referred to planning committee for review. Therefore be it resolved that the application for site plan control approval from FOTEN Consultants Inc. on behalf of Amber Peak Developments for the properties municipally known as 390 and 386 Johnson Street and 40 Aberdeen Street outlined in file number D11-019-2023 be bumped up to the planning committee. Councillor Glenn, you have the floor. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the reason that I'm bringing a bump-up motion is that for this particular property, uh, as many of you are likely aware, this has been an, an up-zoned area, and it's the first development in this uh, new up-zone. And additionally, there's a new process in place which allows this to go through without it coming uh, to the planning committee. So I had constituents reach out to me who wanted to bring some questions forward about this development, and they were caught off guard by the new process and the new zoning. So I'd like to have, give them the opportunity to have their questions and comments addressed. And so in reaching out to staff, um, this was one of the mechanisms with which to do this. Um, it was considered uh, that they could potentially just approach staff, but they prefer to do this in a public forum, to have opportunity to have the public aware of what they're um, bringing forward in terms of concerns. Uh, with that said, I don't think there's a, a lot of opposition necessarily to the development, but rather this is a new development in the area for them. It's of a greater height than they're used to, and so they want to make sure what's going to be in their neighborhood. I think most of us, when something new is being built in our neighborhood, want the opportunity to at least express our opinion on it. So I'm hoping that you'll vote for the motion and allow the opportunity for the constituents in my uh, district to come forward and ask those questions and express their opinions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Toso. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Um, I'm new to bumping up. Um, Developments, so I just have a few questions for staff. Um, so this is at Committee of Adjustment. If we did this, how long would it take for it to get to planning? Like, what's the time frame difference that it would take? Commissioner Agnew, for Mr. Park. Uh, thank you, and through you, certainly I'll start, and if Mr. Park has any additional information, he's free to offer that after um, I have a chance to respond to the question. Um, from a timing perspective, we're probably looking at maybe a month or two um, delay from the normal process. At present, um, our site plan process, the approval is delegated to the director of planning, who is Mr. Park. So normally that process just is, is dealt with at the staff level. With a bump up, we have to schedule bringing that to a planning committee meeting. So we'd be looking at preparing that report. They're usually prepared a month in advance of the meeting. So staff would just be looking at that and trying to prepare to bring it to the committee at the point when it's, it's near approval, but not yet there. So we can explain what's going on with respect to the development, the detailed elements of how it's evolved from zoning to site plan, and to be able to share that with the committee with the understanding that Mr. Park then retains the right to approve the site plan as the director of planning as, as it's delegated as such right now. Do, thank you. A follow-up question. Do we have any idea of the amount of staff hours that it would take to do this? Uh, thank you and through you. So in terms of preparation of a report, uh, the site plan report, we would need to go through providing a detailed description of, of the project. Um, certainly we would be looking at what the public concerns were and making sure that we were addressing that formally in the report so we're speaking to those issues. A report of that nature, by the time it goes through all of the process, because it goes through the frontline staff, up through management, through Mr. Park to myself, and then on to the CAO, you're probably looking at maybe 10 or 12 hours of staff time overall. 
um, and then just some the time that's required to attend the meeting um, and speak to any issues that come up. But typically, we have staff in the room anyway, so there there wouldn't be a one for one hour scenario. But there would be some additional time to just a straight approval at the staff level. Okay, and this would then go into planning and presumably take up more time at planning as well that councillors would ha then have to look get get information back from as well and so it might bump out some other things going to planning is that correct uh, thank you and through you so certainly it would proceed to planning committee as an information report not a recommend report but okay. that would be a formal agenda item and we do look to try to make sure that we're managing the agendas of planning committee to ensure the the meetings aren't too long or onerous for committee members um, but that's something that we can proactively manage should council want to support the bump up motion. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think if I were in the same situation as Councillor Glenn, I'd probably do something very similar, but I, in my mind when I vote, I have to look out for the broader public interest. I think the fact that this is probably gonna get approved anyways, that this is a forum for other constituents to get back, that we're talking about staff time, a delay in the development, I, this I don't think is in a broader public interest. I think it's important in a housing crisis to get things done. So I'm not gonna support this motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. Is the current file closed? Commissioner Agnew. Uh, thank you and through you. So what has gone through the process so far is the minor variance application. So that's been disposed of by the committee, but what is active is the site plan application. So that is currently going through the process of technical review with staff at present time. So if, if a member of the public still wants to make comments, um, either by email or by one-on-one -on -one meetings with staff, is that still eligible to do that? Uh, thank you and through you, that's correct at any point up until the time of decision. And would those documents be considered uh, public documents even though they're a one-on-one -on -one meeting or sent questions in by email that would be recorded by staff and then captured in the report? Uh, thank you and through you. Uh, your Worship, definitely um, all of the documentation related to an active application, it's all available publicly through our, our DASH portal. So members of the public could be accessing what's been applied for through the site plan application. Any type of meetings that take place with the public, technically they, they are public. Uh, we don't attach meeting minutes to the approvals, but certainly issues that are identified as a, a level of concern or things that are discussed, staff would be, would be looking at those in terms of the preparation of the site plan memo. That would go to Mr. Park for approval, indicating how all the items had been addressed. If it's kept at a staff level, if it goes to a committee level, then we would include that information in the information report for committee's consideration. And what's the timeline that was given for notification to the public for comments on this? Thank you, and through you, for the site plan specifically? Yes, what, we're the, what Councillor Glenn is bringing forward, I just, I'm curious um, how much notification were individuals given that they could make comments? I'm just, I wanna know what, how tight a timeline was it? Uh, thank you, and through you. So with respect to the minor variance application, I believe our circulation timing is is it 15 days uh, for committee of adjustment that goes to a radius of households that are near the property? Um, so because those applications are minor in nature, we're not doing major, um, major circulations to huge amounts of people, but certainly there was a 20-day time frame in advance of the committee of adjustment meeting that the public was notified the meeting was gonna take place, um, plus staff could be receiving any of that information up until the time that the committee deliberated on the minor variance application. With the site plan application, as long as it's active, members of the public can provide commentary to staff on that at any time up until the point of decision. And in, in this bump up delay of potentially one or two months, does this affect the potential ground or the shovels in the ground moving forward? Uh, thank you, and through you, through discussions with the applicant, and Mr. Park can feel free to add some information here. Our understanding that the applicants are, are anxious to try to break ground on the project in spring. Um, they do have some renters that are currently in the existing building that's on the property that has to be demolished as part of the construction of the new project. And those renters, I believe, are vacating the existing units on May 1st. 
So we do have some time until construction, but the applicant is looking to tender the project um, on the market through the construction industry to be ready for spring construction in early January. So certainly with, with the bump up, we will be rushing to get things done, but um, knowing in advance, it helps us to proactively manage that at the staff level. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor, would you take the chair? I take the chair and I recognize you. Thank you. So I, I just want to speak for a moment about this one to two month delay. So we desperately need more housing in the city and particularly more student housing. But student housing is a bit different. You've got to hit that window when you construct it. It has to hit the window of September 1st. If you don't hit that window, then that housing is not available for many months, potentially as much of a year. So I think that the timing concern is an even bigger issue in this file than it would be in other files as well. We've already heard that there's a very aggressive timeline here. My concern is that one month or two month delay, maybe that doesn't sound like a big deal, but if that was enough to push past to September 1st, the implication is you could look, lose a lot of housing, which means those students is then gonna have to go into the wider market and we already know the pressure we're seeing on the rental housing market. Now, if this was an issue about not being able to provide public comment, that would be different because that's obviously important. But I think we've heard from staff is that there's absolutely opportunity for public input and public comment. All we're saying is let's do it in a more efficient way so that we don't have that impact on timing. The other thing I need to say here is that there's a reason why this file did not come to public meeting. It's because of all the work we did with the Central Kingston Growth Strategy was to create the zoning so that these projects could be approved and built within the existing zoning framework. My concern is that if we start having these files go to public meetings, then it's actually gonna disincentivize developers from building within that zoning framework because they're gonna say, well, it's gonna end up having to go through a public process anyways. I just wanna make sure that we understand here, there's opportunity for public input, but that's why we did all the work in the first place for the Central Kingston Growth Strategy. So for all those reasons, that's why I hesitate. Ordinarily, when a bump up has come, I'm ordinarily fine to support it, but I think that there are some major unique issues with this particular file, and we all agree that given the urgency of housing, the last thing I wanna do is be responsible for adding additional delay, particularly if that delay causes that housing to be out of commission for a long period of time. Thank you. I return the chair. Next on my list is Councilor Shapes. Thank you. Um, now beyond planning, I thought it came up in discussion that due to Bill 23, we weren't able to bump up anymore. Mr. Park. Thank you, and through you, Your Worship. Um, the ability still exists to bump up, but it's because the City of Kingston has a delegated authority bylaw that gives Council that ability to do that. What it allows it to do is make the motion, as be, is before Council tonight, to request that the report then will come back to Planning Committee as an information report only. What Bill 23 did was make it mandatory for the delegated authority of approvals for site plan to rest with, in this case, the director of planning. Okay. And to go with one of the other questions earlier, notifications were done out for the Committee of Adjustments for this. For what, I know there's a 120 meter radius for planning. Is there a radius specific to Committee of Adjustments? Uh, thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the radius for Committee of Adjustment is 60 meters. So there was notification sent out yes, anyone was. within 60 meters. Okay. One last question. So there is opportunity for individuals to contact you or the site planner for this project if they have concerns? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, as, as Commissioner Agnew has already uh, explained, that opportunity still exists for the public to send in their comments or concerns to staff for uh, review as part of the site plan. And be recorded as public record. I beg your pardon? And be recorded as public record. 
and would become part of the file record. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Okay, next is Councillor Bowman. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, I just wanted to echo your words on, on this file. Um, we know, uh, as you mentioned, there's an affordable housing crisis, and uh, I've actually, um, you know, been speaking with multiple developers lately, trying to get uh, a better understanding of just why development takes so long in the city of Kingston. And I just want to point out that even when almost all the rules are followed and there's almost no controversy around development, you're still looking at roughly 18 months to two years uh, before an application comes in and, and a shovel hits the ground so we really have to be cognizant of that that even in a perfect scenario where nobody is upset and nobody seems to resist it uh, you can be up to two years in the ground and that's just simply because the backlog of, of the entire process so the more we as a council create any type of barrier or or bomb pops or anything that slows it down the more we're actually hurting our own housing stock which in turn we have to be cognizant of this is there's there's very few developments that are not controversial in some way and it is typically near neighbors which we can all understand and empathize with but we are also by slowing down the volume and creating that bottleneck uh, contributing to raising prices because we know it's a supply and demand issue and right now basic housing is simply becoming unaffordable so in in, in this next little while, we're going to have to probably take a bit more flack on some of these files um, just to simply move things along. And I think that, you know, in the long term, what we're doing is the right thing because what we simply need to do is create more supply because the demand is not going away. It's only going to get worse. And the cost is far exceeding what most people can afford. So we have to be cognizant of that on all these files. It's, it's not to minimize some of the concerns, but I think there's different avenues that those concerns can be dealt with. And there's been various studies and unless some significant new information comes to light, which hasn't been brought to light previously in all the staff studies, I think it's it behooves us to actually move these along as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McLaren. Thank you. Let's uh, fact check. I heard that um, there's tenants in there until May. Is that correct? Councillor McLaren, can you just repeat that question just a little bit more slowly for um, Kershaw? I heard that there were tenants in the place right now till May. Is that correct? Uh, thank you, through your worship. That's my understanding. Yes, there's current tenants in the building till May of 2024. And I heard that uh, you can, in fact, proactively manage this in such a way so that there will not be any delay in building. Is that correct? There'd be a two-month delay now, but they still can't build until after those tenants are gone. Is that correct? Thank you, and through you, that's correct. We'll endeavor to make sure that we try to deliver this in a proactive manner just to minimize any impact on the schedule. Absolutely. So there is no bottleneck that was mentioned and there is no, um, there's nothing that's actually slowing this down and getting shovels in the ground if we were to vote in favor of this. Is that correct? Uh, thank you. And through, maybe not per se. Um, I think we can manage it at the staff level. However, it's just additional staff time that we're working on on this as opposed to other things. But we prior reprioritize as needed depending on council's direction. Thank you. And uh, planning does this quite regularly. I know in this term we've already done two and I know in previous years we've done many of these. Is that correct? Staff are pretty competent in um, doing bump ups. Uh, thank you, and through you, that would be correct, Councillor. The one major change, as Mr. Park referenced, was the changes that came to Section 41 of the, for of the Planning Act, which deals with site plan control, and that was through Bill 109. So some of those changes fundamentally changed the previous terms uh, of Council's process from one that could include recommendations associated with the bump up. Now we're dealing with an information report only. Great. And um, I understand uh, it was claimed that the central growth strategy might be affected by this. Can we check that? Um, will this in any way hinder the central growth strategy? Uh, thank you and through your worship. So I think what uh, Mayor Patterson was referring to is that this property in particular was one of the areas that was upzoned as part of that secondary plan exercise that took place um, over the previous couple of years. So it was a site that previously had lower zoning that we um, implemented as staff, the zoning that's in place that allows the six-story building. So that anything to do with this recommendation and a bump up doesn't impact any of the sites that we have already enacted the zoning on, those are those are legal as of right situations by the previous uh, recommendations of council. 
Okay, so it doesn't affect it at all is what I hear from that. Is that correct? Thank no. you. It doesn't impact any existing sites that have zoning attached to it. That's correct. That secondary plan is now complete. Okay, thank you. Um, so then the question is, uh, can well, one of the questions is that uh, sitting on planning, I know that we've done this many times. Um, I have no personal issues with this. I think it's important that we actually listen to the public. Um, and the public uh, were, in a sense, blindsided by the new regime. So it seems that, at least in this case, it's a special case in which it should be allowed. Um, so let's do this. Also, um, this is an issue that's related specifically to a particular constituents, constituents in a particular district. We're all likely to have this at some time. All right? We all have districts that we may have to ask council for something. And uh, if you don't support your fellow councillors on that, you may not be supported when you need something in your district. And I'm sure we all watch. So I would ask those of you who have already said no um, to please consider your constituents when something is needed from the rest of council. Because it's pretty much trivial for everybody except for the, the councillor in the district who it's for. The, the situation may be reversed at some time. You all have my default support when it comes to something in your district, if you play the game. If you don't, it's tit for tat. So I'm asking you, please vote for this. Okay, uh, next is Councillor Hassan. Thank you, Your Worship, through you, the first, uh, uh, I'm not very pleased with the comments uh, from my colleagues uh, uh, we are not playing games here, and we, we're working together, but we're trying to have the understanding about every issue we have. Uh, my question to the staff is, um, if this opportunity have been given to the resident of that district uh, to come back and meet with the uh, uh, adjustment committee, there will be opportunity for them to re recommend the changes they want to see the changes, and the changes will be awarded to them if they have the opportunity. Commissioner Agnew. Uh, thank you, and through you, so I don't think I maybe explained uh, the change with the legislation maybe clearly enough, but what has changed? So um, from the process that was previously followed by council before Bill, Bill 109, was we would bring a bump up um, when a motion was passed by council of a site plan to committee, and it would come with a recommendation. Um, and that was more of an input process where the committee could be directing staff to be working on certain things if they felt the issues weren't satisfied. Based on the legislative change, the bump up process if supported by council will be one more of information sharing. So a, a direct flow of information about the project and what's what the details of the project are, but not necessarily the ability at that stage to influence the project or to make changes to it. It's more information only as opposed to influencing changes on the project, if that makes sense. If we are delaying this project or this opportunity uh, given to the um, residents to bring their concerns uh, forward to the committee or to the staff, uh, is will be any uh, financial burden on the uh, uh, developer due to the uh, delay, whether it's a month or two or longer? Commissioner Agnew. Um, thank you, and through you, you know, I, I certainly the applicant is looking for the most expedient approval process uh, possible because that gives them the certainty of going into being able to put their documents out to tender and find somebody to construct the project. Uh, I believe the applicant is aware that this motion is being discussed tonight, and they're aware of it and understand some of the rationale behind it. So. They're at the whim of council, but we've assured them that staff will do everything we can to mitigate additional time associated with accommodating the bump up, but they understand the reasons behind it and certainly will respect whatever council's decision is. The last question is, uh, is that possibility instead giving them the time to come back to the committee? We, we can, I um, mean, staff can give them the opportunity to meet with the staff and uh, let them uh, bring their concerns forward, and if, uh, if, if it's possible to accommodate the, those, those concerns, uh, staff can do it instead of delaying. I mean, if we have another way to um, give them the opportunity to come forward and bring their concerns or share their concerns. 
Thank you. And through your worship, certainly an alternative option would be to ask those residents to have a meeting with city staff to talk about their concerns and earlier in the process to see if there are in fact modifications that can be made to the project while we're going through technical review. It's less of a public option in that it's, you know, not in council chambers and it's not a meeting that's on, on YouTube or through Zoom, but it's certainly, that's what we do with applicants and, and residents all the time is to meet with them on their concern. So that's, that's an alternative avenue uh, for council to consider that I think would address some of the concerns. It's, it's really a matter of process and how public um, the residents would like the experience to be versus something that's more of an internal meeting approach, but either option is, is available. Uh, thank you. Uh, my colleagues, uh, I, I don't think we have a problem to supporting each other and we will not continue to support each other. As a counselor, as a representative of my district, my first duty is to talk to my constituents, see if they have legitimate and reasonable uh, concern with they want to bring it back. And if I can satisfy them, I will satisfy them. But also I believe the city staff uh, have been doing everything accordingly to give the enough notice, whatever the bylaws says to, uh, to the public, to bring there forward. If people are not paying attention to them themselves uh, for those notices, for the advertisement even on the social media, we have a notice board on the sites. And I mean, I don't know how we can help uh, those uh, residents and personally I might not going to support my uh, constituent if they are not paying attention ahead of time when everything was advertised and everything was putting on the um, in the papers uh, like information was available and the time was available. If they was not available to uh, have that time and looking into that matters, I probably will not support them at, at the first place. And also, I will not be scared to stand up with, with the staff and with, with my, my colleagues if it's something is not reasonable and we can accommodate. I mean, what the Councillor Bohm said, is, is it reasonable. We are trying to deal with the crisis and we are trying to um, deal with the delays, unnecessary delays is, is from the history. And the Kingston is bad for that, putting on, on delays and delays. And I request my uh, fellow Kingstonians, just please, the city is doing everything is possible through the social media, through the emails, through the service. Pay attention if you have a concern. Take a time and respond within those time limits. If you pass that, just live with it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, seeing no other hands, Councillor Glenn, you have the last word. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Um, so I'm, I'm hearing what's been said. So I'd like to point out that this isn't simply a matter of paying attention. It was brought because there's been a change in process. And so we all know what happens when processes change, things get missed. So a question, how much notice is given prior to, to the public, prior to a planning meeting? Mr. Park. Uh, thank you, and through you, uh, your worship, it's 21 days. Okay, and how far does that notice get spread out. We talked about that with Committee of Adjustment. I think uh, for Committee of Adjustment? Yep. Uh, for Committee of Adjustment, that notification range is 60 meters. Thank you. And when we go to a planning committee meeting and the public comes, is the applicant typically or a representative of the applicant present to hear the comments? Through you, Mr. Mayor, at planning committee, uh, yes. So if constituents go to staff, they don't get that opportunity to um, discuss it in public with the applicant, correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that would be correct. It wouldn't be in a public forum. Oftentimes when the public comes to planning and they make comments, do we not see applicants try to make tweaks or changes to um, better suit the community if they can? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, there are times where the applicant will make changes to their applications based on comments from the public, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so the bump up motion is also an opportunity, given the change in zoning and the change in planning, to not get some of that flack that Councillor Bowen mentioned. There's going to be more of this type of development. 
And I'm hopeful to ease my community into the fact that this is a big change for them. So a large part of the bump up motion is to allow them the opportunity to do this with the first development coming forward. And it's not about standing up to them. I don't need to stand up to my constituents. I'm here to represent my constituents. So this motion is about doing that. It's about representing their concerns. Um, I'm not making a judgment call on how valid that is. They have concerns. They'd like that to be heard in a public forum. They'd like the opportunity to have that discussion. I am well aware of the housing crisis. Sydenham District is struggling. Queen's is increasing its enrollment. The pressure is huge. But I want to be able to move forward um, with the knowledge that we have represented the constituency well and that they've had an opportunity to at least address it at the beginning of what is going to be a long process of building a lot more housing. So that's the purpose of this bump up, is to give them that chance to adjust to a new process, have a say about this, and get accustomed to what's probably going to continue to come because of the change in our, our central growth strategy. So I hope you'll consider voting for it, and I appreciate uh, your time and your comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So we will call the vote on new motion number one. All those in favor? Opposed? And that loses by a vote of five to seven. Councillor Ridge, Osanic, McLaren, Glenn, and Shenani in the minority. Okay, moving on to new motion number two. Moved by Councillor Glenn, seconded by Councillor Stephen. Whereas the City of Kingston wishes to augment the harm reduction strategies being put into place by the Queen's University Alma Mater Society during various fall 2023 events, therefore be resolved that Council waives Section 8 of Schedule R1 to Bylaw Number 2006-213, a bylaw to license, regulate, and govern certain businesses. With respect to licensed refreshment vehicles participating in AMS events at locations approved by the city to extend the business hours for such refreshment vehicles to 2 a.m. during the designated periods of the University District Safety Initiative between October 14th to November 1st, 2023. And the council authorize the Director of Licensing and Enforcement or their delegate to revoke any exemption granted and or impose any terms or conditions on an exemption where deemed necessary in their reasonable opinion. Councilor Glenn, you have the floor. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the purpose of bringing this motion, uh, Director Smith and I had opportunity to meet with the AMS, and as most of you are aware, they've been engaging in harm reduction strategies. Uh, one of the ones that they uh, implemented in the previous year was to have food trucks available so that uh, during homecoming, anyone who was um, out at events had the opportunity to uh, get food, non-alcoholic beverages, and um, hopefully reduce the impact. So the motion is basically to give Director Smith the power to extend the hours on these food trucks, and if there are other additional food trucks that are participating, to allow them to um, be in place during homecoming. Uh, we had to bring it rather quickly because uh, homecoming is around the corner. So uh, the other purpose of this is hopefully that uh, if we do a bit more of this in terms of uh, a strategy around homecoming, that we'll see fewer people also hitting our emergency room. We often see people who are highly intoxicated ending up at the emergency room during homecoming, people who have been injured because they have uh, over-imbibed, and this hopefully is a measure that will prevent some of that. Um, I'd hate to see somebody who is in uh, true need of coming to the emergency room for uh, a health-related condition, not being able to get treatment as quickly as they need. So it's a multifaceted sort of um, approach that we're trying to take to managing the events in the district, and um, this will simply give Director Smith the power to uh, extend the hours and or retract them if things don't quite go as we hope. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any discussion on new motion number two? Uh, Deputy Mayor Stephen. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, and through you. Um, as Councillor Glenn indicated quite clearly, we're moving really quickly here. And so ordinarily, my understanding is there might be a staff report and, and some details about this, but because of the timing of the meeting with the AMS, 
things had to come through a council motion. So fair enough, we're, we're dealing with a tight timeline. Um, I think because this is new, we've got a lot of unknowns and I know I have some questions about where in town these food trucks might be. And also I have concerns around the fact that we're kind of substituting a sanctioned Queens event with food trucks for healthcare. Um, so that's a whole other conversation. At this time, I'd like to move an amendment. Um, I'll need a seconder, please, if the clerks could put that up. Okay, uh, so there's a uh, motion to amend, moved by Councillor Stephen. Um, I will look for a seconder, seconded by Councillor Ridge. The new motion number two be amended by inserting the words on Queen's University campus between the words city and two and the first resolve clause to read as follows. Therefore be resolved that Council waive section eight of schedule R1 to bylaw number 2006-213, a bylaw to license, regulate, and govern certain businesses with respect to licensed refreshment vehicles participating in AMS events at locations approved by the city on Queen's University campus to extend the business hours for such refreshment vehicles to 2 a.m. during the designated periods of the University District Safety Initiative. Okay, so we have a motion to amend on the floor. Uh, Councillor Stephen, I will restart, or Deputy Mayor Stephen, I will restart your time and uh, you can speak to it and then we will have discussion on the motion to amend. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Um, I think it's pretty clear what this amendment is for. It's the idea that yes, Director Smith should have that ability to extend the length of time that food trucks are open, um, but personally, I would feel a lot more comfortable if this were restricted to Queen's University campus. I know the idea is that we're trying to help disperse and spread out students. Uh, however, I'm not sure that having them in the community neighborhoods is going to achieve that. And I, I realize there's no way to know until we try, but I think that as a, a slower first step with the intention of helping Queens to, to deal with this issue, um, I, I would prefer this. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Anybody on the amendment? Councillor Chenini. Right, my question was, uh through you, Mr. Mayor, to staff about the difference between on Queen's campus, if it were not, if it was as not amended, would, what locations what were you thinking of so we can compare where you were thinking of going versus where this would put it? Mr. Smith. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, we had contemplated uh, a couple of spots that we actually have already established. We have a map of these around the city. So one of them had been in the Victoria Park area, so just slightly north of really the University District proper. We had thought about that. Further, we had thought about putting them somewhere around in City Park, around the courthouse, so on the east side of Berry Street. So more or less pushing them out of the epicenter of the kind of university events were Aberdeen, Earl Street, that kind of idea. Those were the two that had really popped into our mind when we had first discussed this. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess like one of my concerns would be about having more, because one year there was like all the students moved to Victoria Park and they ended up damaging some of the equipment there and things like that might happen at um, City Park. I think that would be my concern. Uh, thank you. Councillor Ostroff. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Patterson. Uh, I'm, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm probably okay with the amendment, but, um, and I was going to be okay with the motion, but uh, some of my constituents are not. And I just, I, I'm wondering if we're out of, it's kind of out of context to what we should be doing. <laughs> I don't think this um, motion is, uh, I mean, I could support the amendment, but I'm, I'm not sure I could support the motion now that I've heard it again. And so um, I wanted to ask, I don't know, is this out of our lane kind of to work, to, to make a, some, is this not Queens? Should, be, should Queens not be dealing with this? So, so the only the only caution that I have is that right now we're yeah. just speaking to the amendment itself. Okay. So I'm not sure if your is your is your question, Councillor Stafford, relating to that piece, or is it talking about like the motion as a the main Thank motion? Thank you, Mayor. Pat. Yeah, sorry. I guess in this case, um, I'm kind. This is really. Uh, um, I'm just concerned that we are in someone else's kitchen here. Is this a Queen's issue, or? is this ours and I, I feel a little uncomfortable with the whole thing and and maybe not as um, 
much to this, so I'll, I'll leave it alone for now if someone can answer that, but I, I just don't feel settled with this. Okay, I, I think the question is fair. I, I think that there's some ambiguity about whether it's a question to the main motion or the amendment, but I'll allow the question. Um, Commissioner, I do? Sure, I'll offer some comments, and if Director Smith has anything in addition, because he's been working a lot more closely um, on the ground in, in terms of some of the preparations. I think, you know, we're, we're continuing to try to collaborate with um, Queen's, the administration, certainly the AMS and other student associations in and around homecoming specifically, and of course, Kingston Police, and trying to figure out the best ways to um, mitigate the types of social um, activities that happen associated with homecoming, whether they're sanctioned or unsanctioned, and the impact on the community. And we've been hard at work on this for a number of years, trying to collaborate, certainly in terms of the recommendation around food trucks and mitigating any type of um, health risks associated or harm reduction is, is if there's going to be um, events where students are imbibing and, and attending social events where there's alcohol or other things consumed, is it, um, is it safer in terms of trying to mitigate that behavior by having food available? And I think that's where the AMS is coming from, from the student perspective and certainly potentially some of, of Queen's administration. We're, we're not nearly where we need to be in, in terms of the planning. It's a work in progress. And, and despite our best efforts, there's only certain things the city has control over. So I'm not suggesting in any way that we don't have vast rooms for improvement, but this was a specific um, option that the AMS raised and it's something that's within our capability because we do regulate food trucks, but the current bylaw doesn't provide any delegated authority to the director to use their discretion in these types of matters. So unfortunately it has to come before council for a decision. So certainly in, in future years, because this is a very time limited um, motion that the mover has brought forward, the intention from Mr. Smith and his team, because they are currently reviewing uh, the business bylaw in holistic form, that any type of permanent um, exemption of this nature certainly is something that would go through a public process, but given the time-limited nature, it was something that, from a staff perspective, in terms of our conversations of what we could bring to the table, thought it was worth at least trying from a mitigation and harm reduction um, perspective and to see how it goes and if it is effective, and certainly with the intention of mitigating impact on the broader community as well as not just the students that are, or the people that are participating participating in, in homecoming festivities. Thank you for that. that. That clarifies it for me. So it, if it's coming from bylaw to be supportive of their work, I can, I can support this. Okay, thank you. Next is Councillor Tozo. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Uh, just a very practical question is, uh, what do you consider the borders of Queen's University? Is it Earl and Barry? Does it exist in our hearts? Like, what is, uh, where is Queen's University? Is it all around us? Is it West Campus? Uh, in a very serious way, like, what, what would you consider the directives of this motion to be the borders of Queen's? Mr. Smith? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm really looking at the, the, the institutional boundaries of, of the main campus in and of itself. So no, really good question. I mean, I, I'm seeing Berry Street, I'm seeing Union to a certain degree, you know, maybe up to Earl. Uh, like the like I said, the the real the institutional where we got named buildings, that kind of idea, I call that Queen's campus proper. Okay, so I'm not going to see any in, in, in innovation park. I'm not going to see a food truck park. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, uh, never felt more like a burrito now than ever. Um, I, I do have some concerns about the overall motion. Um, one is that the 2 a.m., I am worried that the public is going to hear we're condoning street parties until 2 a.m., uh, and that will be the optics of this. But I think with the clarification of this amendment, I'm fine to support the amendment. I'm fine to support the motion. I think it just says it's a Queen's thing. Keep it at Queen's. Enjoy homecoming. Come here. Be safe. Uh, go to bed early and drink lots of water. Uh, so I'm fine with the amendment, and I'm fine knowing where Queen's is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Shapes. Thank you. I do have a problem with both the initial motion and the amendment. Um, our bylaw enforcement team and our Kingston Police Department have done a great job in reducing the effects of unauthorized street parties, especially in Aberdeen Street. 
my concern is that we are going to be sponsoring this unauthorized street party with food trucks up until 2 a.m., which is going to be a public thing, which with the recent last couple of events that happened and with the attendance being down, attendance may go up because now they have some place to eat as well. So this is to the amendment or to the main motion? Yes, to the amendment. Okay. Okay. So I, it doesn't matter to me if it's on campus or not on campus um, because this is the, the amendment's talking to the on campus. So yeah, so as long as as long as your comments are directed to yeah. whether or not you agree that we should have it on campus. If, if this was tagged with maybe okay. something with the AMS or Queen sponsoring a, an authorized street party, like when I was there, when I was because I'm an alumni. They had closed off Union Street between University and Division Street and had abandoned everything else and have the food trucks along there as well. That would be sort of centralized, kept on campus, that I would support. At this point, I'm not supporting the amendment. Councilor Glenn. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not supporting the amendment, and the reason for this is because I think it, the AMS has already done this last year on campus. Um, part of this is to also recognize that these parties and the students and alumni travel through the neighborhood. This is already in all of the neighborhoods. It's not simply in that little area that we're calling Queens. So yes, um, I think I trust Director Smith enough that he would make a reasonable call about where these are going. And because it was brought up in the context of addressing this amendment, uh, could you just confirm we are not sponsoring food trucks, are we? Mr. Smith? Through you, Mr. Mayor, no, absolutely not. We're, we're really, all we're doing is facilitating the, the, the extended operation of the food truck to 2 a.m. as opposed to the normal 11 p.m. shutdown time. Okay, so I would, I'm not in support of the, um, the amendment uh, simply because I think that if we're actually going to have any effect on uh, capturing more of the population that is going to be out during homecoming, it does need to go into the areas that were discussed with the AMS. Um, we have a history of knowing the neighborhoods that are impacted by this. It's not just the university district, it's Sydney as a whole, and then did the districts beyond that. So my hope is to catch a few more individuals, have them uh, potentially be able to get some food, some drink, and um, reduce some of the harms, not see them show up at the emergency room, not see them uh, you know, participate in such destructive behaviors. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sinek. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I won't be supporting the amendment either because I want to give staff the flexibility to put the food trucks wherever uh, they're needed. If it goes, like we just heard staff kind of had the idea of City Park in front of the courthouse or Victoria Park, or maybe the party's gonna move down to Breakwater Park and Gordowney Pier, wherever the food truck can go then to make everyone sober. Um, I won't be supporting the amendment. Deputy Mayor, would you take the chair? I take the chair and I recognize you, Mayor Patterson. So I have a very different take on this amendment. So I'm, I'm very supportive of the vision of what Councillor Glenn is bringing forward. I actually think there's real value to it. I am very concerned about the optics of this. Because yes, we may not be sponsoring something, but we are allowing, we are permitting it. And so we as council need to decide what is it that we are going to permit? because in the eyes of residents, what we permit is what we endorse. I have grave concern about a food truck in Victoria Park, exactly for the reason that Councillor Chinani mentioned earlier. That was a huge issue at homecoming a couple of years ago. Imagine the angst of people dealing with a huge gathering in City Park and saying, and the city even allowed a food truck there to actually fuel what was going on in Victoria Park. Imagine a food truck down at Breakwater Park when we've been actually trying to discourage large gatherings in the middle of the night. I think that this is very, very thorny. I will also say this. As a city, 
and as mayor, I have been pushing for Queens to do more on-campus programming as a way to draw people out of some of the other residential neighborhoods. Councillor Shaves mentioned this about the Reunion Street Festival that used to happen. And actually, it was quite effective for a number of years when it operated because it specifically drew people away from Aberdeen Street onto campus. I think this actually hits two pieces at the same time. I think it hits the health issues that Councillor Glenn has mentioned. I think there's a way to actually promote that, yet, yeah, you know what, there will be more things going on campus, so not everybody has to go to Aberdeen Street or to other areas in the residence. I think it's important that we can say yes, we endorse and we promote and we permit health and food options, and obviously all the, the aspects that Councillor Glenn has mentioned, but we are not going to endorse that off of campus. I think that would be a very, very dangerous signal and a big mistake. Thank you. I return the chair. Thank you. Next on my list is Councillor McLaren. Thank you. Um, so where did these recommendations come from? The AMS, or how did we come to this idea? Mr. Smith. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it was through a meeting we had with uh, members of the executive of the AMS a couple weeks ago. And anyone else was there? Councillor Glenn and myself. Okay, so in this meeting, uh, it was believed that we're trying to do something, and this was one of the suggestions that could be done pretty quickly, is that correct? So the AMS runs a food truck themselves on the Queen's private property, and this flowed out of that part of the conversation. Well, if there's one food truck, could more than one help to further help with the harm reduction strategies that they're trying to achieve? And you believe that that would include moving a little bit out of Queen's campus area? As, as a person who's going to be out there uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning, probably during homecoming, I would like to disperse that crowd as much as I possibly could. So if we can have a food truck a little bit on the periphery, the thought was that might offer a bit of a dispersal mechanism of some sort, allowing the work of my bylaw enforcement officers and Kingston police make it a little bit easier. We don't know, like we're not entirely certain if that is actually going to be a cause and effect, but it was a thought that, that it possibly could be. And you are an expert in this, that your wisdom in this is probably better than the rest of ours, is that correct? I wouldn't say that, but uh, I have been to a few of the events and I, I think it, it quite possibly could have a positive effect. Okay, and uh, if we don't, if we limit it only to the, to the um, Queen's campus and students actually do move into other areas, um, would we be increasing the likelihood of harm to them by not providing this? I mean, not necessarily. Uh, the, uh, the food trucks, in all likelihood, the, the ones that are already approved are on Union Street, for instance. So that would be pushing them a little bit south of the epicenter of, of where a lot of the festivities happen. So that's the vision. There's already a number of approved ones on the Queen's campus. I'm, I'm just assuming, you know, what happens when you make an assumption. But uh, I think they would probably take up the mantle on extending their hours to go to 2 a.m. There's probably economic reasons for them to do it as well. If there was an ask for further food trucks to be approved in the Queens campus area, Union Street, somewhere you know in the, in the institutional part of Queens, we would consider that and, and, and quite potentially run with it. So I think there will be an effect, a positive effect on either, whether, whether it's with the amendment or with the original motion. I think there's pros and cons to either one. I'm just happy that we would be considering it. Okay, and so the original plan was outside of Queens. Um, we heard a comment that uh, it would be really bad if they were at Victoria Park, but not so much in City Park because that's a common place where students frequent. Um, is it possible that uh, you can sort of direct them in that direction because City Park is probably a better place uh, than Victoria Park? I can absolutely direct the, the food trucks. Where be I will be permitting the trucks to go to a very specific location. So they're not going to be driving around or anything like that. They will be given a permit for a very specific location for that very specific period of time. Okay. So you've heard from His Worship that um, Victoria Park might not be the best place. Um, by giving you this authority, you can make on-the-spot decisions. Okay, no more on Victoria Park put them here instead because this is where we sort of want the students to go in order to disperse from high concentration areas. Is that correct? 
Certainly, and I would be consulting with our community partners like Kingston Police. They probably have some valuable input to be adding into where we would potentially locate these things. Okay, so if we were to vote for this, it sounds like we could be handcuffing your um, freedom to deal with these parties. I would not necessarily say a handcuff, but you're, 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 you're not giving me as quite as many of options, let's put it that way. Okay, I think you should have as many options as you can, and I, trust your, I trust your judgment. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is Councillor Hassan. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Uh, my question to... Uh, Sorry. If something happened uh, during that, that party, um, the way the plan is, has been described in the uh, motion, and you are also saying that, who's the, uh, who will be responsible, city, AMS, or the uh, Queens? If it's any, any, anything big happened, let's say in Victoria Park, fight breakup or something, then who will be responsible for it? Mr. Smith. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I mean, I have the on-the-spot ability to re revoke, you know, a permit that, that was given. So if I did see something that, that was happening badly, I mean, I could tell that food truck to move and make the move within 10 minutes. So I would have that flexibility to, to react very quickly to a situation that was happening. You will be able to give in written to the council within that time if we prove this one that that's your recommendation and you are okay with that is things will according to you, will go smooth. This will not anything happen probably, or you will be able to control that. Any incident? Can, can you just repeat the question, Councillor Hassan? Sure. If the staff can put in written the recommendation to, to the council, I, I know we don't have a time, but <clears throat> I'm sorry, this, I, I forgot the name. <laughs> Uh, uh, Smith, Mrs. Smith, right? So Mrs. Smith will be able to put in written that your recommendation, then we can attach to the motion uh, later on. Your recommendation, what you're recommending it? I, I'm not sure that I, I understand the question. Councillor okay. Sun, so you're I'll, asking- I'll go the way around. I heard from Mr. Smith that what he think, how, putting the truck in Victoria Park or the surrounding area, to, according to his recommendation and the location, his recommendation is that it will be okay. And he says it would be a better idea to uh, have that a little bit further from, away from the campus. Can we have that in written, that recommendation? Uh, Ms. Morley. Uh, through you, Your Worship, I can confirm that there is a separate clause in the recommendation of the motion that gives Director Smith the ability to revoke or amend or impose any terms and conditions on an exemption. So he has that approval from Council if the motion were to pass tonight. Well, uh, at this time, I'm not comfortable with the both motion uh, because there's no staff recommendation attached to it, no report attached to it. Until next year, probably I, I won't be able to support any of the motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anybody else that wishes to speak to the motion to amend? Deputy Mayor Stephen, you have the last word. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. Uh, thanks everyone for your, your thoughts and comments and insights. I think it's really important that we look at this in a fulsome way. So we know that the intention behind this AMS collaboration for food trucks is harm reduction. Queen's University had their Take Back the Night event just this past week and if you're not familiar with it, it's all about the idea of gender-based violence and sexual violence. The reason I bring that up is that if we are drawing people into certain parks with the intention of reducing harm, we may inadvertently be creating situations where harm can be done. There are a lot of students who have experienced things like that. I would hate for us to feel like that was something on us. I think that AMS should be here tonight to, to speak to us, if this is something that would really be helpful for them. I would prefer trucks to be kept on campus for lighting, for safety. I just think it would be a better move. And further, if AMS did this last year and they wanted to take it further, they should have reached out sooner. 
Here we are with a council motion, no staff report, trying to make the best decision we can, and they had every opportunity to reach out sooner. Um, Councillor Glenn, you've been trying really hard to collaborate with them consistently. I've, I've seen you doing this, this work, and staff as well. So I think that if we could send AMS a message respectfully, if you need something, let us know earlier, please. So I hope that that could be passed on. Thank you for your time. Okay, so we'll call the motion, or sorry, the, call the vote on the motion to amend. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, and that carries by a vote of seven to six. Um, but I forget who voted against. Sorry, who voted against? <laughs> so I tried to do this. Councillor Osanek, McLaren, Hassan, Glenn, and Shapes. And Councillor Bowman. Okay, so we're back to the uh, original motion now as amended. Uh, Deputy Mayor Stephen, you still have four minutes of the clock if there's anything else you wish to say. Uh, otherwise, we will move on. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak to the main motion? Councillor Shapes. I want to follow up on, a, on something that uh, Director Smith had mentioned. He mentioned that if he saw something that was not to his liking, that he would vacate or have a food truck vacate in a certain area. I'm just questioning how is that going to happen if there's 100 or 1,000 students around that food truck? Mr. Smith. Through you, Mr. Mayor, obviously that would be an issue. We're going to have to keep a good eye on it. So we will have a significant police presence as well as a bylaw presence. And if we do have the food trucks out there, they are going to be something that we are patrolling rather frequently. So I think that we could react very proactively before something got out of hand. Thank you. Um, I am also disappointed the AMS is not here to speak because I was hoping they could maybe expand on what their plans were. As I mentioned, I did go there. I was an alumni, I attended many events during Frosh Week and Homecoming that were, either on, that were on campus, either on University Street or on Kingston Hall parking lot, which was sanctioned. I didn't hear anything about any unauthorized parties anywhere else. This, I think, is going to promote it more so. I, there's been people advertising this from overseas, but coming to homecoming or fake homecoming. I don't think we need to promote it any further. If Queens or AMS wanted to do something on campus like they did before, keep it centralized and have the food trucks, I'm in full support. And even in my, one of my previous employments, delivering pizza for a competitor or someone here. I was able to drive through campus and all the streets without any implementation, there was, there was including Aberdeen Street. So this is something that's relatively new since I've been there. And I don't think we need to promote it even further. As I mentioned earlier with the amendment, our enforcement team and the Kingston Police have done a great deal of work on this and reducing number of attendees at these events. And I think this is going in the wrong direction. And if we have food trucks elsewhere, we're gonna be hearing it from our constituents as well. So I will not be voting th for this. Thank you, Councillor Tozo. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Um, I think I'm fine to support this now. To me, there's so many checks in place that we have by law, being able to authorize, unauthorized, we've narrowed it down to Queen's University, which is well led. I take uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Stevens' uh, Stephen co comment, uh, and I think that amendment is fine. We're really giving a lot of checks to prevent anything from getting out of control, and this is an experiment that we're doing for this year. I would have really loved a staff report on this to see what other jurisdictions are doing. This is not to disparage any of the staff members here or any other councillors. Sometimes we have to make the on-the-fly on the decisions, but I think we have really put a we, we're being very risk averse with what the motion is now. Um, with all of these things in place, with a, uh, with bylaw kind of having a yes and no on this, and keep in mind, we might even not get a bunch of food trucks. They might there might not be businesses that are interested. We might just end up with one food truck on Queen's campus. Like we don't know what we don't know, but let's you know. I, I I'm cautious that we're authorizing it late, but it's three hours. It's one a.m. to two or eleven p.m. to two a.m. Like this isn't. 
we're not really rolling the dice, I think, that much. I think we're, you know, I think we're, we're pretty safe. Um, so I'm fine to support the amended motion. I think we'll learn some information. A uh, question I do have for staff is, do we have any idea what other universities or college towns are doing? Are they doing this? Are there food trucks everywhere? Um, I went to Western. That was a party town. Uh, but my heart, again, is at Queens. Uh, so uh, I want to emphasize that. Please don't park a food truck outside my house. Uh, but do we have any idea what what other jurisdictions are doing? Mr. Smith. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't have any specific knowledge. I do know, though, however, that, that we are considered the leader in the, the way we are dealing with nuisance parties and these types of events. Uh, I can tell you most of the university towns in Ontario have spoken with me or my staff on this because we were amongst the first to put the nuisance party bylaw in place with all the amps and the various police liaison teams and all that stuff that Kingston Police is doing as well. So I don't know if they've explored some of these more of these harm reduction strategies, which is really the way that, that we're, we're coloring this. Uh, I would expect they will though, after you know they see what happens with us in, in, in the homecoming period. Okay, thank you. Again, I'm I'm I think I'm fine with this. Um, let's be safe. Hopefully, everybody has a, a pleasant homecoming, um, and I don't know. Have a burrito. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Son. Just one more quick question to Mr. Um, Smith. Uh, after meeting with the AMS, did you guys meet with the police and uh, share with them that uh, what we are trying to do through this, or what we are what kind of recommendation you bring it to the council just because we don't have enough time to further reports? Did you uh, discuss with them? Mr. Smith? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it has been briefly spoken with, we've briefly spoken with the police. We actually have a more comprehensive meeting coming up next week. So once we get a decision from tonight, we'll be able to have a more fulsome conversation. And like I mentioned earlier, really get their input about where appropriate locations would be, even on the Queens campus itself, how we can police it, how we can kind of monitor that throughout the, the timings and the events that we have coming up. Thank you. Uh, one, once again, I can't support motion as well without police report or police uh, inputs staff report staff recommendation I, I think that's not fair to we, we should go and order this so I, I won't support this motion either okay Councillor Glenn you have the last word thank you and through you mr. mayor so a couple of points of clarification the AMS their whole executive is there for one year, so they just got back in. Uh, so in terms of being able to do planning with them, the options were extraordinarily limited. Only one of them remained in the city for the summer. The rest were all elsewhere. Uh, so our meeting time with them was really short. So bringing forward, for example, the um, post-secondary working group, that's to eventually build and have a historical memory for what we're doing. Um, as for what other universities are doing, I've been sitting on the Town and Gown Ontario meetings, and there is a move for this type of harm reduction in most jurisdictions. So although we are definitely uh, a leader, we're seeing that. Um, our university is a little bit different because it is so embedded in a neighborhood. Most of the other universities have a bit of distance between themselves and actual neighborhoods. So we're in an unfortunate and difficult circumstance. So when we talk about the university district, we're talking about people who live on the street down there. I almost hesitate sometimes to have it called the university district because what it does is it creates this impression that we don't have regular people down there, that we don't have neighbors down there. Um, and when the parties hit the street and there's no way to further disperse them, that becomes problematic. So that's part of this. Um, the other thing that I'm going to say about this, and I, will, I hope you will support us, uh, at least you know, making this further step this year, because this is what we could do this year. But the entire community benefits from having over 30,000 students come here every year. But Sydenham District bears the brunt of the homecoming activities, St. Patrick's Day, and I see it. I've been down to the district when the parties are going on, and I hear it from my constituents, and I've got constituents who are scared. So any mitigating things that we can do as a city to represent the entire city, um, I think are important to contemplate. Yes, 
We are having the discussions with Queens. I am hopeful that we will get to planned events. Unfortunately, it's not coming quickly. And I have residents who are saying, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna leave, because I can't tolerate this anymore. So the measures um, that we're trying to implement are really critically important for a multitude of reasons. And if we're, it's unfortunate, in my opinion, that we're restricting it to the Queen's campus. I understand the rationale that's been brought, but I think it's a lost opportunity to test this out. The police and bylaw have stepped up their efforts greatly. They monitor these things extraordinarily well. And I was hopeful that we would give them the leeway to give that a uh, try. However, it's restricted to Queen's campus, but I'm hoping you will at least allow us to do that there and vote for this motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we'll call the vote on new motion number two as amended. All those in favor? Opposed? And that carries by a vote of 11 to two. A Councillor Hassan and Shaves opposed. Okay, we have no other new motions. Are there any notices of motion? Uh, no, I think that there was a delay actually. So Councillor Bowman and I have been going back and forward. So uh, there have been a couple times where it appeared that he voted against, but he was actually reassuring it's voting in favor. So we're, we're about two seconds ahead of Councillor Bowman on the screen. So, okay, if there are no notices of motion, will uh, Madam Clerk ask for minutes, please? Moved by Councillor Osterhoff, seconded by Councillor Chenani, that the minutes of City Council meeting number 24, 2023, held Tuesday, September 19th, 2023, be confirmed. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, we have a uh, tabling of documents, number of communications. Is there any other business? Uh, Madam Clerk, ask for bylaws, please. Moved by Councillor Ridge, seconded by Councillor Osanek, that bylaws one and two be given their first and second reading. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Moved by Councillor Tozo, second by Councillor Amos, that bylaws one and two be given their third reading. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Councillor Tanny, seconded by Councillor Amos. All those in favor? Opposed? And we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.